stop, wait. Sorry, what sorry. What comes first I've before got... you go? Check your mirrors. Right. Seatbelt on. Okay. I feel like driving doesn't suit me, man. I'm too scared. <laughs> Something really weird happens when two people get to share a car journey. You know, you get relaxed, you say things about yourself, things you normally wouldn't share. Yeah. I was like, I just want to have a show on primetime telly once and I just want to be on a big radio station and mm. I just want to, like, have a cloven light. Like, I had those things, which obviously are massive, massive things. Nailed it! But, like, they happen <laughs> really quickly, luckily. It's all done. <laughs> yeah. Auto Trader has given me some cool cars like this one and I'm using the power of persuasion <laughs> to get people you know and love to share some of their deepest and darkest, and I cannot wait to do it. And you get to see it all. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe it either. Yeah. So I am back behind the wheel of another gorgeous car, and uh, yeah, you can tell I'm into this one this time around. I haven't chosen it, but the car that has been picked is one that I definitely co-sign. I'm behind the wheel today of a Mercedes G-Wagon AMG, uh, and this car, is Buckingham Palace on wheels. I mean, it even smells like royalty. It's ridiculous. Um, so who's picked the car? Well, someone that you could best describe as, I guess, a firecracker. You know, this is someone with a lot of personality, someone with a hell of a lot to say, and someone who's only really just getting started. So you may have seen her on your telly. You've definitely heard her on Radio 1. And um, if you don't know her, you're probably gonna fall in love with her by the end of this, because she's got a lot to say even more than me. And the she I'm referring to is none other than Maya Jamma. Jump in, jump Hello. in. You all right? I'm all right. This is pretty oh, flash, isn't it? It is very, very fancy. I'll tell you what, it's your fault. You picked wow, it. I love it. It's a nice car. It's a nice drive as well, actually. It's very big. I mean, you can hold on to many things. <laughs> it feels like it's about to go off-road at any point. That's the vibe I get from it. Like, well, doing city life, but can go to the jungle. Well, that depends on how good I drive today. Yeah. If we hit the curb, it will feel like we're going off-road, so you have been warned. Um, <laughs> how, how are you getting on with your driving? Because you're learning, right? I am. It's taken me a while, to be fair. I felt like I never really needed to drive up until now because I've always lived kind of central to things right. even in Bristol I was like centre-ish and um, yeah it just never really felt that important to me until now we've moved a bit outside of London or on the edge if you like now I'm like I actually need to get in and not and, take and a million things of transport to get to one places just how good a driver are you how do you think you're doing Mm, not very good. <laughs> yeah, I'm not good. I'm, right. I'm in the deep end, but it's automatic, and everybody I tell that it's automatic. It's Hang like, on a second. You no, should no. just be able to do it straight right. away. Okay, so that's not driving lessons, that's go kart lessons, because an automatic is two pedals, it's stop and go. <laughs> yeah, so, what's pressure, difficult about that? The pressure, all right. These the are my pressure, struggles. what that you apply to the pedals? What yeah. are you talking about? My foot's quite heavy, is what I've learned. I've got a heavy foot. Okay. So, I keep going <clears throat> like that. Right. That's the struggle I deal with. Also, spatial awareness okay. is what some of my feedback's been that I'm not very good at that and I think just being in a car and not trusting other drivers is my problem because I know I'm quite safe I'll go slow yeah. I won't hit anyone but people around me are in a rush and they're very and that puts me on edge a bit okay I'm a little bit worried for you that you're referring to the driving of others as <laughs> you're using a sound as opposed to a word to describe the way that other people drive around you. They painted a picture did you knew what your channel was I, I did I, I knew that it meant that I'm never going to be on the road when you pass <laughs> So um, you said we, uh, yeah. as in you and your partner, you've moved away. Me and Matey. Right, exactly. So yeah. Matey is, is Stormzy, right? Yeah, he is. Okay, so <laughs> you are dating someone who I know yeah. and someone who I know loves cars as yeah, well. Yeah, he does. So like, what's your relationship with the cars that he drives? Because he changes them a lot, doesn't he? He changes cars, but he'll only have one at a time. Mm. And I don't know, I, I, they're all a bit of a blur to me. They've all looked kind of similar, much to his disappointment. Like, I'd be like, look, I've got a new car. And I'm like, oh, this is it's black again. Same, yeah. I just call them Batman cars, like yeah. black ones that are low. Yeah, right. That's all I know. I'm sure you probably are breaking his heart with this. <laughs> with this. Yeah, no. He's got one of these, though. Right. This is why I like it so much. Okay, so you're in this on a regular basis? Yeah, well, sometimes. Sometimes. And he doesn't give me too many. Hang on a second. All that excitement and awe that you just showed me was complete lies. Because this is what you go to Sainsbury's in. No, I don't. <laughs> I, you do. I walk the dog to Sainsbury's. But no, this is this is like my occasion car. Sometimes I get allowed in. Right. It's great. Okay. I'm about to become Mr. London Tour Guide because we're just coming up to Abbey Road. Oh, so look, look, can you see here like all of the people doing the, the zebra crossing thing? Look, can you see them all waiting to do What's the Beatles? That? What is that thing? Oh, when you Are walk you... across. No, I know. I was I about know, to say it. Really? Oh, oh, look, that, she's actually just crossing and she's doing she's the Beatles doing the car. Bit. So um, out of my tour guide mode, you left Bristol and came to London at 16, was it? Yeah. So. I did my first year of sixth form in Bristol and then had a couple of auditions in London, ended up going up applying for the colleges having a nice summer there, ended up with a boyfriend. Yeah. Everything's really amazing. And then 
literally in the summer holidays before I was supposed to start whatever college, my boyfriend at the time um, was murdered in Bristol. I don't really want to go into details, but he'd come down to Bristol for a carnival and then yeah. there was like a shootout. He was nothing to do with it but a bullet hit and he was caught in crossfire, wow. basically. And that was like, at the time, and still probably to this day, like the most devastating thing I've ever been through. How would you sort of articulate what came from such a traumatic experience at such a young age? Um, what came, so now I can look back, like however many years later and think, okay, that, that, that happening made me super strong and it made me super like compassionate and it, all these nice traits came out of it. But when you're going through it at the time, I right. think you are literally just like, I don't want to be here anymore. This is the worst possible outcome in my life. Like, yeah. delete me. So you, you go through that like horrible stage. You go through just not really wanting to do anything. And then slowly you have to kind of come to terms with things and realize that this is like one of the worst things that can happen in life, but it, it is life. Like you don't always get to have people in your life forever. Some people go along the way and some people are taken too soon. Mm. And I think him passing made me even, well, it made me definitely want to move to London because I felt like everything I told him and everything I'd planned with him to like chase my dreams and do all of those kind of things that I definitely wanted to achieve at that point. Because yeah. I was like, I'm gonna do everything I said I would to make him proud and to, you know, like show everyone I can do it despite like yeah. the horrible cards that have been dealt. So where, where is it all going for you? I don't even what, what's know, the, you know. What's the big ambition for you? I don't know because I feel like I had all my goals and all my little plans when I was younger written out and like prayed about constantly yeah. and just really like on it, on it, on it, this is what I want to do. But I don't think I like, well, I did aim big, but I didn't aim like long term big. Yeah. I was like, I just want to have a show on primetime telly once and I just want to be on a big radio station and mm. I just want to like have a cloven light. Like I had those things, which obviously are massive, massive things. Nailed it. But like they happen really quickly, <laughs> luckily. <all> done. <laughs> yeah, but that, like, yeah, so I, I need to recenter what I want to do. Like next, I kind of don't have a clue. I just want to master my crafts and get as good as I can and be like a respected mm. presenter. So you've also made a documentary. Yeah. Now, uh, tell me a bit about that doc and um, if this is something you imagine yourself doing more of. I was quite naive and didn't really know what went into a documentary and didn't know how much of your, like, especially if it's one to do with your personal life, how much goes in physically and how, like, draining and how heavy it can be, uh, especially when I did my one, which was about my dad, like, growing up, uh, he was in prison since I was really young, like, from about three, went from being, like, a prison dad documentary to, like, my own personal, maybe am I going to meet up with my dad after not speaking to him for 10 years, and it got really... Did you? Uh, yeah, I did, I did. On camera? On camera, but you don't actually, so you, the camera's in the park, and you see, like, his back kind of thing. You don't see, I don't put his face on camera, yeah. and you don't hear the audio, but you see us, like, actually meet, and then I explain things after. Was which was like? mad yeah so mad but even that like I didn't go into it thinking that was going to be the thing I went into it thinking yeah great documentary I get to experience things I've got my own personal view and then next thing I know it's like an actual massive Moment. milestone in my life yeah. where I'm going to meet up with this man that's pretty much a stranger for the last 10 years um, and that was yeah god it was mad I think I had all these expectations I wanted there to be something that had happened to my dad that had made him go on to be violent as he you grew up. Reason. Like you I wanted, wanted to give him right. like a kind of, okay, well, you know what, I understand because if you went through that, that can, you know, lead to that. Yeah. But there wasn't and there was kind of just like excuses and that was a bit downsidey because I felt like, oh God, I yeah. had in my mind it was going to be this way and right. then I was going to help like try and build a relationship and now it's just a bit like... Would you do it again? find a, a, another personal subject to tackle? I think I've got a few personal subjects. <laughs> There's a few things I haven't touched on, but yeah, I don't, not for a long time. I think I'd wait until I'm in a really good space. Yeah. Like, I think I'd probably like have therapy throughout as well, me personally, just mm. because I like going through that during the day, you're kind of just left with all the emotions as soon as you get home and there's no one to debrief. There's no one that talks through it. It's so funny you say that because it took me I think seven years of making docs yeah. before I realised that I needed therapy yeah. during and after mm. making the films. Yeah. And now I have that. Yeah. So with every film that I make, I have that 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 place to decompress, mm. which is safe. But you, you have a podcast of your own, right? Yeah. And do you sort of take that platform that you've created to discuss some of these things that we're just touching on yeah. in this conversation? Well, mine's like a woman 
women-based podcast for women about women. So we discuss loads of things from like worst dates to like pay rise and, and gender gaps and, and things like that. So it does cover a lot of topics. Most of them go off and left round and all over the all over the place. But body image is obviously a huge, massive one mm. for women. And Body image is an interesting point to pick up on actually because yeah. I know that as a woman, uh, your body and the way that you appear and the way that you dress are far more uh, higher on the agenda than for somebody like me as a man yeah. uh, when it comes to the press and when it comes to people who really shouldn't be thinking about that or oh, caring right. about that, right? It is so bad. have you ever had one of those moments where uh, a private moment has become public just because of your gender? Yeah, well, th this is a recent example. I went to Barbados to DJ for right. a brand, but I got I got invaded, didn't I? I was on the beach, 8 a.m. in the morning, in my little bikini, mind my own business, and there was like so far away, but you could just see the long camera lenses, like perhaps in a bush. And at that point, I've already sat down, but I know, like I've been walking around in my bikini. They've obviously caught pictures of me. I've been here long enough, mm. and you instantly just feel like sick because. One, it's a complete invasion of privacy, and two, it's just like, this is my body. Like, yeah. I, I wasn't even willing to share this with like everyone at this moment. I'm just trying to chill with my friend. There was no one else on the beach. Yeah, wow. Like, and you've just taken pictures that are gonna be online for everyone to see, and you don't even know what they look like. I don't even get to see them beforehand. Mm. Like, it's just, off you go. And I think that feeling is, I don't know, scary. And it's also just like, you feel like you're not in control mm. at all. That doesn't really happen to men. Mm. That's more of a, a woman thing, especially. I've in never life. had to worry about it. No. But as someone who's worked with women my entire career, I've always had a TV wife. Yeah, Do you know yeah. what I mean? I've had 50 of them now. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm a serial uh, TV husband. Yeah. And in doing that, I realized just how many difficult things the women that I have to work with have to deal with that I will never, ever experience or ever know. Yeah. Thank you so much for hanging out today. Thanks for having me. It's yeah. been lush. No, it's been nice. And I've, I, I've been a good chauffeur, haven't I? You have been Thank a fantastic you. one. Smooth and steady. Okay, hang on a second. That was with way too much confidence. They're not going to believe you. <laughs> They're not going to believe you at all. But I believe you. It was, yeah, yeah. It was, it was all, all right. right. It was okay. It was, it was all right. okay. Thank uh, you, Pleasure. Though. Thank you so much. See you later. Take, Take care, love. Ta-da. Bye. Stop, wait. Sorry, sorry. What comes first I've before got, you go? Check your mirrors. Right. Seatbelt on. Get your handbrake. Right. Yeah. Check your lipstick. <laughs> I feel like driving doesn't suit me, man. I'm too scared. <laughs> I'm literally like, ah. Okay, so to go that way, I have to, no, because I'm trying to think. To go that direction, I have to, it's not opposites. It's the same. So just turn your wheel out a little bit like that. I really don't like that you're thinking this through. No, because I'm, this is what I'm saying, mate. I'm really not a seasoned driver yet. This is very oh, you got it. Go on, keep Thank going. You. One more full turn. There you go. You're straightening up. There you go. Yeah. 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 Don't yeah. panic. Yeah. Don't yeah. panic. Yeah. Don't panic. Next time I'll be with rugby legend Gareth Thomas. This man is known for some of the incredible things he's done on the pitch, but also some of the amazing things he's done since he retired. I've got nothing but admiration for you for doing that. Thank you, bud. No, I genuinely do. It's, Thank it's you. incredible. So, if you hit subscribe, you'll get more cool cars, you'll get more interesting people, and there'll be me too. Sorry about that. You can't have it all.